If you have your Bible with you today, turn to Deuteronomy, the 31st chapter. <clears throat> Don't forget to be praying about the upcoming revival with Brother Carter. I Amen. ran up some flyers. If you want one, you can have it after church, or one or two if you want. Hallelujah. Looking forward to what the Lord has in store. Amen. Amen. We had a wonderful time last Sunday morning. The yes. Spirit of the Lord moved and had one man give his heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 My, my, my. <clears throat> He's looking for somebody up there to baptize him. If they don't, we may have to dunk him in the river. All right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank Praise you, Lord. The Lord. But he might have got somebody. I know he went to a church up there Sunday night, so maybe they got that took care of. Yeah. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy, the third chapter. We find here an aged Moses getting ready to turn the reins over to Joshua. And within these words that Moses speaks to Joshua, we'll find that God has a promise not just for Joshua, but for us as well today. Aren't you glad today that God's promises always are true? Yes. They never fail. Amen. You know, man can make you a promise and then you know he may keep it till he dies, but when he dies, his promise dies with him. Amen. 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 Maybe he promised to do a certain thing for you or to take care of you. Maybe you had a maybe you had a parent or a grandparent that took care of you. Come on. They said they'd always take care of you. And then whenever they died, they were gone. Their promise was gone too. Right. But God's promises are true today. They are steadfast and they do not pass away. Amen. Amen. He is no respecter of persons today. Amen. Right. He has no respect of persons. Come on. If you will surrender your life to him. The way that those that we find within the pages of the Holy Book did, the promises within these covers belong to you. All right. So we find Moses here, and let's read a little bit of what it says here in Deuteronomy the 31st chapter, first verse. And Moses went and spake these words unto all of Israel. And he said unto them, I am 120 years old this day. That's been his birthday, amen? I can no more go out and come in. And the Lord hath said unto me, Thou shalt not go over this Jordan. They get ready to go over into the promised land. Amen. Hadn't been for the doubters, they would have already been there. Do you remember? Whenever Moses sent out the twelve spies, he said, You guys go out and see. Spy out the land. Come back and give me a report. Oh. Ten of them came back and said, Ain't no way. We can't do it. There's no way we can do it. We can't do it in their sight. And we can't do it in our sight. Amen? Right. So doubt kept them out of the promised land. For 40 years they wandered around in the wilderness. And Moses is getting ready to turn the reins over to somebody else because he's going to be led up into the mountain by the Lord and he's going to pass away. Amen? The Lord thy God, He will go over before thee. Moses is saying, I can't go with you, but God is going. Amen? Right. Oh, aren't you glad for that today? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Mama can't go all, all the way with you, but God can. Amen. Amen. The Lord thy God, He will go over before thee, and He will destroy these nations from before thee, and thou shalt possess them. And Joshua, he shall go over before thee, as the Lord hath said. Now God has appointed Joshua to be the leader in Moses' stead. Amen. Amen. Moses is telling the children of Israel this. He said, I can't go with you. And for many of them, you can imagine what kind of uh, feelings they must have had. This had been their leader for all of these years. Every time they needed an answer from God, they turned to Moses. Every time they needed somebody to blame, they turned to Moses. <laughs> Amen? Right. That's, that's the job of being a pastor. Amen? You can either do nothing wrong or you can do nothing right. It just depends on who's doing the talking. Amen? Amen. So Moses is getting ready to turn it over to Joshua and he's telling the children of Israel this. And the Lord shall do unto them as He did in Sihon and to Og, the kings of the Amorites and unto the land of them whom He destroyed. And the Lord shall, shall give them up before your face 
that ye may do unto them according unto all the commandments which I have commanded you. Now listen to the words that Moses speaks to Israel here. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, He is that He it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee. He will not forsake thee, He tells them. Amen? Amen. And Moses called Joshua. He called unto Joshua. So now he spoke to the children of Israel. Now he's going to speak to Joshua. And said unto him in all of the side of Israel. Now see, he's got him before all the people. Mom. He's given him the commission. Be strong and of a good courage. Yeah. For thou must go with this people into the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their fathers to give them. And thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, He it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee. Neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Right. Now we find a common theme here. Moses speaks to the people and he says, fear not. Yeah. He speaks to Joshua and he says, fear not. Right. Now did he tell them that the way would be easy? No. no. Did he tell them that everything would go exactly the way they wanted it to? No. no. Did he tell them there wouldn't be trials, there wouldn't be tribulations, there wouldn't be struggles, there wouldn't be right. battles? No. But he said, fear not. And we're fixing to find out why this morning. He said, fear not. I heard a preacher preach along these lines last week. And it was a preacher that I used to have a lot of confidence in and used to have a lot of respect for. He used to be an anointed man of God, but over the years I've seen him slip deeper and deeper into the prosperity doctrine and the name it and claim it and the, all of that. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll see how he's doing today. And he preached, and all oh, for a while he preached good. And I thought, man, I was seeing glimpses of the man that I used to know, the man that I used to have a lot of respect for. But just at the end of it, I, could, I should have turned it off, I guess, Brother Sleece, before it got to all the way to the end. When it got to the end, he started talking about the number 13 and how powerful it was and how it could change your life. How that if you got up and went to the phone and called them in an offering of $130, God was going to destroy the curse and He was going to heal you. And how if you went to the phone and you called in an a offering of $1,300 or $13,000. As I sat there, I thought, well, if the power is in the number of 13, I can't wait for Him to do it. But He didn't. Why not ask for $13? Right. Amen? Amen? If there's so much power in the number of 13, why not ask for 13 cents? Now some of the people probably watching him, that's about all they had was 13 cents. Amen? Come on. I'm glad today that we know that the power is not in the numbers, but in the one who created the numbers. Amen? Amen. I'm glad today that, that we know today that you cannot buy a miracle from God. Amen? Right. He will bless you. I believe in giving. Y'all know that. Amen? Amen? Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Right. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Read. Give and it shall be given. Amen. Press down. Shake it together. Run it over. Will men give it to your bosom? I believe in giving. Come on. But I don't believe God's a vending machine today. Amen. Amen. I don't believe you walk up and put in your offering and push what miracle you need and it moves God. Amen. Faith moves God. Amen. Yeah. Not your money, but faith moves God. Well, oh, he began to preach along these lines and it stirred me up. Come on. And at first I thought, well, I don't know if I want to preach what he preached that soon or not because, you know, that's his sermon. That's his message. Right. Until I did a little digging and I found a man that preached it two years before this guy preached it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Same name. I don't know if he got it from that guy or not. He might not have. I know a minister at Brother Hinton's church got up one night and he preached a message and he preached almost exactly what I had on my notes that was in my briefcase and neither one of us had even talked to each other. He didn't know what I had he didn't, and I didn't know what he had. So, I know the Lord works along those lines, but I don't feel too bad to preach His message today when I realize it's not His message, it's God's. Oh, yeah. But Moses is saying, fear not Israel. Yeah. Fear not Joshua. Why? You may ask yourself today, why? Why not fear? Why, why, don't we, why shouldn't we have fear? Well, He gives us the answer to that. Fear not. Be not afraid. For the Lord thy God, He it is that doth go with thee. Amen? Fear not. Why not? Because He's with you. Amen. Amen. 
because He's with you. Not because you'll never face another valley. Not because you'll never face another mountain. Not because you'll never face another trial. Or you'll never face another tribulation. But because He is with you. Yes. The Lord Himself would speak these words to Joshua in Joshua the first chapter. Whenever they're getting ready to cross over Jordan and go into the land of Canaan and possess the land. Yeah. He would speak these words. Come on. Joshua 1 and 5, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee in all the days of thy life. Listen what he tells him. Oh, this had to move Joshua. This had to be a life-changing experience. He not only told Joshua he was going to be with him, but these are the words that he speaks to Joshua. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Did you hear that? I will, I will not fail thee. I will not forsake thee. Now listen, you've got to get a hold of this today. As I was with Moses, and Joshua knew what God had done when he was with Moses. Amen? And not just that I'm going to be with you, but I'm going to be with you like I was with Moses. When I parted the Red Sea like I was with Moses. Whenever I sent the death angel and you were protected by the Lamb's blood like I was with Moses. Like Moses when he stood before Pharaoh and proclaimed, let my people go. That's the way I'm going to be with you, Joshua. Oh. As I was with Moses, Amen. I'm going to be with you. Amen. Fear not. Come on, Fear not. Why not? Because He's with us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You drop down to verse 9, Joshua, the first chapter. A few verses below what we just read. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. Why? For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Would the way always be easy? No. Would there be obstacles? Yes. Would there be trials? Would there be battles? Would there be times of distress? Yes. But the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Amen? Amen. He's with me. Amen. He's with me. Right. He's with me. Yes. No matter what I face, Brother Dave, right. He's with me. Amen. Brother Sleece, no matter what I go through today, yeah. He's with me. Brother Mike sent me a text this morning about 8.30 or 9 o'clock. Didn't tell him what I was going to preach, but you know what he told me? The words to the song that he sings, Jesus is with me when the storm clouds gather. He's standing by my side when I hear the thunder rolls. He holds my hand when I begin to tremble when the winds of this world are blowing strong. Amen. Jesus is with me. I text him back and said, thank you, brother, for the confirmation. Amen. Jesus is with me. You may be in the valley today. Oh, but he created the valley. Amen. He's the shepherd of the valley. He leads us through the valley. You may be in the storm today. Yeah, but he's the master of the storm. Amen. He's the maker of the waves. He's, he's oh my, my, my. He is God and He will always be with you. Amen. He will not leave you. He will never forsake you. Yes. So He tells Joshua, He says, I'll be with you. Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with you, whithersoever you goest. Right. Brother David, He was with you when you got in the car this morning. Yes, sir. He was with you as you drove over here this morning. Right. He was with you when you walked into the church house this morning. Oh. Amen. He was with you when you laid your head down last night right. on your pillow. Amen. Right. He's with you. If right. you're out there today and you're in jail, right. if you're trusting in Him, He's right. with you. You ain't in there alone. Amen. Amen. There's no bars man has ever built that's strong enough to keep Jesus out. Just ask right. Paul and Silas. Us. Amen. Yes. At midnight they begin to worship and begin yes. to sing and begin to praise. Why? Because they were not going through anything. Listen, they were in jail with oh. blood running in their shoes. Amen. Oh. They were in a time of that, that most people would just be down and distressed yes. and just perplexed. But he was with them. Amen. He was with them. Amen. He was with them. Amen. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake Amen. you. You have this promise today. He's yes. telling us to fear not. Come on. Why not? Because He's with us. Because He's with us. Because He's with us. Yes. Come on, preach. David would tell these words to Solomon in 1 Chronicles 28 and 20. David would say to his son, Solomon, be strong and of a good courage. 
and do it. He's talking about building the temple. Fear not, nor be dismayed. For the Lord, the, for the Lord God, even my God. Oh, I wish I could preach this morning. Listen to this. I like these little things. Yeah. Little things that make you go, huh? Amen? Yeah. Things that make you stop in your tracks uh, that you might just read over a thousand times till one day you see this. David speaking to Solomon. What are we talking about today? We're talking about fear not. Why not? Because he's with us. Amen. Because he is with us. Oh. Because he walks with us. Because he talks with us. Because he suffers with us. Because he goes through the valley with us. Because he goes through the fight with us. Through the fire with us. Come on, preach. David says, son, for the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. Yeah. He will not fail thee, Amen. nor forsake thee, until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. Amen. For the Lord God, even my God. You see, David knew a little, about what he, a little oh. bit about what he was talking about. Yeah. He's telling his son, the God that was with me, whenever the lion came out of the brush yeah. and tried to steal my sheep, yeah. the, the Lord that was with the God that was with me, whenever the bear came down out of the hills and tried to steal the sheep, the God that was with me when I stood before Goliath in front of all of Israel and said, you come to me with a spear and a sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. That God, my God, even my God, is with you. You're, listen, David's God is with you today. Yeah. The God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that delivered him from the fiery furnace without even the smell of smoke Amen. is with you today. The God that was with David in the lion's Amen. den is with you today. Fear not. Why not? Because Jesus is with me. Jesus is with me. He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. Amen. Because He's with me. Absolutely. He's with me. Always. David knew what he was talking about. Come on. For the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. Yes. David was saying in Psalms 37 and 25, I have been young and now I'm old. Yes. Yet have not have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He had walked in the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah. All of us know Psalms 23 by heart. Amen. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Are you listening to me today? Amen. Fear not. Why? Because thou art with me. When I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, oh. fear not. For thou, I will fear not, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Amen. Fear not. You may, you may be in the situation today and you might ask, why not? Mm. Why shouldn't I be afraid? Why shouldn't I be afraid? Because yeah. Jesus is with you. Amen. Because He is with you. No matter what happens, no matter how hard or bad things get, He is with us. Amen. What if the sickness kills me? <laughs> what if this healing that I've been begging for doesn't come? come oh, i got news for you. If you don't get healed on this side of the river, He will hold your trembling hand as you lay on your deathbed. And you won't have to cross Jordan alone. Jesus is with you and you will have a new body. You will have it. All things will pass away. All things will become. You'll be like Him and you will be healed. The ultimate healing. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. I don't understand why everybody don't get healed. Right. Amen. The Hensons used to sing a song. Let me see if I can find the words. What can cause an old man that's about to say goodbye to just lift up both of his Dying hands with the tear running from his eye. With his loved ones gathered all around him, he can smile and say no fear. Because the one that brought me safe thus far is going to lead me on from here. Amen. Jesus will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. I know you're sitting out there today and you feel like you've been forsaken of God. You feel like He's nowhere to be found. But He's there with you. He said, I'll never leave you. count on His Word today. You can count on His Word. Amen. You trust Him. You trust Him. Fear not. Why not? Because He's with us. Because He's with us. Because He is with us. He is with us. Emmanuel. God with us. Oh my goodness. 
Paul would say to be absent from the body yeah. is to be present with the Lord. We talked about this a couple yeah. of weeks ago. Even death cannot separate you from Him. Come on. Amen. Amen. You're a winner either way. Yeah. No, He never said everything would be rosy. As a matter of fact, Isaiah 43 and 2 speaks these words. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Why? Because I will be with thee. He would speak to the church of Smyrna in the book of Revelations, and he would tell them to fear not. Be faithful. I am with you. Endure to the end, and I'll give you a crown of life. I wish the church of today could get a hold of that because it seems like any little wind of discouragement that blows about half the church backslides. Amen? Uh -huh. It seems like every time things get a little hard, well, God did, don't love me. Somebody needs to slap your jaws. Amen? God loves you so much that He gave His only begotten Son that you wouldn't have to split hell wide open. God loves you. Amen. Get off of your penny pot. Get rid of your pacifier. And man up and understand that God loves you. Yes. God loves you. Amen. He's with you. Yes. Amen. Yes. He's always with you. Yes. I think there's some Christians need to know that. Yes. When you sneak into the boot scoot and join on Saturday night, hopes the pastor don't see you, you drag Jesus in that mess. Amen. When you sit down in front of that movie that's rated R, do you think Jesus steps outside of you and then outside the room and says you just have fun and pick me up on your way out? No, you see him down there. Come on. Make him watch a smut. Amen. Amen. There's a knob on that thing for a reason. Yes, sir. Amen. Turn it off if it ain't fit to watch. Yes. Well, make the kids leave the room. It ain't fit to watch. Well, if it ain't fit for them, it probably ain't fit for you. Amen. Come on. Ooh well, that's old fashioned. Yes. That won't get you no fans. Amen. I told him a while back, told him on radio, I said, if you see me coming out of a movie theater, Brother Billy done back lid. Yeah. All right. Amen. Amen. Too many devils in there. Right. Why in the world? Why in the world do I want to purposely walk into the devil's den? Amen? Yeah. My goodness. Stay away from my places. Somebody told me one time to have a rapture proof roof. I don't know if that's true or not, but I wouldn't want to be caught in one of them when the trumpet sounds. Amen. Especially if I was watching something that Right. Ain't fit to watch. Amen. Absolutely. Listen to what he says to the church of Smyrna. I'm going to try to quit meddling. And under the church of uh, the angel of the church of Smyrna, write these things. I'm in Revelations 2 and 8. He said, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them, which say they are Jews and are not that are of the synagogue of Satan. Listen to what he tells them. Fear none of those things. Now he's getting ready to tell them they're going to go through some things, brothers and right. But he's telling them, don't fear. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Oh, that kind of goes against the modern day feel-good doctrine, don't it? What do you mean suffer? I ain't supposed to suffer. Everything's supposed to be good. Right. Everything I touch is supposed to turn to gold. Roses are supposed to be, I'm supposed to sleep in a bed of roses. Amen? Fear none of those things which thou wilt suffer. Yeah. The devil shall cast some of you into prison. Right. My goodness. But bars and dungeons will not separate me from you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's what he's trying to get them to listen to, yes. to hear. Come on. That you may be tried. But see, trials won't separate you right. from him. Amen. He don't say, well, here you go. You're going into the valley. Yes. I'll see you when you get over on the mountaintop. Come on. I ain't going to go through that. Right. No, he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. You may not... There, listen, there have been times. I've been saved for a lot of years. You don't be saved as long as I've been saved without going through times where you thought, God, yeah. where are you at? Right. I don't feel you. I don't see you. I don't hear you. Right. Yeah. But His Word... Oh, that's why you need to get a bulldog grip on the Word of God today. Right. Because when you can't see Him, Brother Rodney, when you can't hear Him, Brother Rodney, when you can't feel Him, Brother Rodney, mm -hmm. 
His word says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. But I'll always be with you. Come on. Ain't in the feeling. You go by the feeling, you finish this with hell wide open. Yes, sir. Amen. Come on. But it says, fear none of these things because I'm going to be with you. You shall have great tribulation. Right. Ten days. Be, be, it says, be thou faithful unto death. Right. For see, even death won't separate us from Him. Amen. And I will give thee a crown of life. Then He says, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Fear not. Why not? Because He is with us. He will not forsake us today. He has promised us that He will go with us. You may not be able to count on the promises of man, but you can count on the promises of God. Amen? Standing on the promises of God today, you can count on them. Amen. You can count on God's promise. Absolutely. Amen. I've went through things. I've faced things. I've fallen. I've I, I bloodied my nose and scuffed up my knees and I've struggled through things and I've Come messed on. up and I haven't lived a perfect life, but He's never left me. He's always been with me. Amen. Come He's on. with you today. He's with you today. Yes. Fear not. Why not? Because He is with us. Why? He will never. Somebody say never. Never. Never, 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 never leave you because He promised He would be with you. Yeah. Just as He promised Abraham, He was with him. And Jacob, Amen. and Israel, and Moses, and Joshua, and Elijah, and Daniel, and Zacharias, and Mary, and Joseph. Yeah. He speaks those same words to us. Come on. Hebrews 13 and 5. The writer, Paul, says, Let your conversation be without covetousness. Right. Be content with such things as you have. For He hath said... Who had said, Jesus, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Come on. I will never leave thee, nor forsake. Is Jesus a liar today? No. Oh, the church, is, sometimes I wonder if the church hasn't branded him as one. Yeah. Because they don't give heed to a lot of what he had to say anymore. But he said, I will never leave thee. I will never forsake thee. Matthew 28 and 20, He said, I am with you always, yeah. even unto the end of the world. Amen. Yeah. He would close out the book of Matthew like that. He would tell them to go into the world and teach them about me, and I am with you always, <laughs> even to the end of the world. And then He would say, Amen. He would put an exclamation point, a big period at the end of it. Period. I'm with you. I'll never leave you. Just as He spoke to Joshua, and He said, As I was with Moses... So am I with you. Just as David told Solomon, Solomon, the Lord God, even my God, shall be with you. He's telling us that today. He is with us. He is with us. Fear not. Why? Why not? Because He is with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to the book of Revelation in closing today. Revelation, the first chapter. Fear not. Why not? For He is with us. Greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. Amen. Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar looked over to that fiery furnace where He threw them three Hebrew boys. So let me look in there and see just how dead they are. They threw them down in there bound hand and foot. Yeah. He looks over in there and he says, Whoa, wait a minute. Did Ben Jerry Clary said, Oh, my son. Yeah. We threw three men down in there. Right. I don't see three men. Right. But I see those three that we threw in there. They ain't bound no more. They up walking around. Yeah. But I see a fourth one. Right. Amen. What do you think the devil sees when he sees you going through the fire? He don't see you by yourself. Amen. He sees somebody with you. Right. Amen. Wow. Well, that song they used to sing, I will never walk alone. You know? mm. Never walk alone. When you walk through the storm, mm. he's with you. Mm. When you walk through the valley, he's with you. When you walk through your sickness that you're going through, He's with you. The king says there's a fourth man and he looks like the Son of God. Amen? Right. He's with you in the fire. 
He's with you in the lion's den. He's with me in the field. He's with me in the city. Amen. You know, we talk about the scripture that says, I'm blessed to go when I'm going out. I'm blessed when I'm coming in. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed everywhere I go. I'm overtaken by a blessing. Why? Because no matter where I go, Jesus is with me. When I go out, Jesus is with me. When I come in, Jesus is with me. When I'm in the city, Jesus is with me. When I'm in the field, Jesus is Jesus is with me. Fear not. Why not? Because He's with me. He's with me. He's with me. I may die today, but if I do, I'm ready to go. He is with me. He is with me. Hallelujah. He is with me. He is with me. He is with me. He is with you. Right. Here we find John. You think you had it rough. Yeah. According to history, been bold and all. Right. And blinded. Right. We'll shut him up. He's the last one of them left. Uh, we'll put him out there on the Isle of Patmos. Mm. All by himself. Oh, we find somebody on the Isle of Patmos with him, Brother Sleep. Oh, I feel good today. Amen. We find somebody, Brother Dave, on the Isle of Patmos with him. Right. Them rulers, them leaders, them governors, they put him out there all by his lonesome. Amen. He ain't going to talk to nobody now. He ain't going to tell nobody about that Jesus now. Come on. Well, they didn't have sense enough to know that Jesus is out there with him. Amen. John would get a revelation out there all by his lonesome. Unlike any man had ever had before or ever has had since. John says, now remember, he's been bold in all. He's blind, according to the history anyway. Either way, he's been exiled. We know that from the Bible. Yeah. He's out there all by himself. No, he's been going really going through it. He's had a rough time. Mm -hmm. And on the Lord's day, we don't find him on the sick couch. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> we don't find him on the pity pot. Amen. Right. What's the Bible say? Oh, this here ought to stir you up today. It sort of make you feel bad if you're sitting at the house and you ain't in church this morning. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Why? Because I was in good health? Probably not. Why? Because I felt real good? Probably not. Why? Because everything was going good? Probably not. But he was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Why? Because Jesus was with him. Amen? Fear not. Why not? Because Jesus is with you. He said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a great voice yeah. as of a trumpet mm -hmm. saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Yeah. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia yeah. unto Ephesus and Smyrna and Pergamos and Thyatira and Sardis and Philadelphia and Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice yeah. that spake with me. Oh. And being turned... I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto brass, as if they had been burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many what you won't know who's with you today. Oh, I can't think of a better description. The first, the last, the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end. Hallelujah. He ain't your co-pilot today. If he is, you need to swap seats with him. Amen. Amen. He's going to be your pilot today. Come on, brother. But John turns and he sees this magnificent revelation of Jesus Christ. His wisdom, His power, His glory. Yes. Ah, ah. Whew, hallelujah. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two edged. We're talking about who's with you today. Right. We're talking about who's with you today. Come on. Amen. A sharp two edged sword. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Look what he's gave us. Look what he's gave us today. Yeah, Amen. Lord. He's with us. He's with us. He's with us. Right. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Mm -hmm. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me. And you know what he said to John? Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. I am the first and the last. 
I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Fear not. Why not? For he is with us today. Amen. The I am that I am that spoke from the burning bush to Moses on the backside of the desert is with you today. The Jesus that walked out on the bow of the ship and spoke to the storm when the disciples were so afraid right. and said, Peace. Be three little words. Wasn't like we are today, you know, we have to stomp, snort, and throw some snot to get somebody delivered. Three little words. Peace be still. And the winds and the storms obeyed His command. That's who's with you today. <coughs> Jesus is with you today. The God that told Job when he was wallowing in a little bit of self-pity, gird up your loins like a man. I want to talk to you. Come on. Then he starts asking him questions, Brother Sleece, along these lines. Where were you at when I created the heavens and the earth? Amen. That's the God I'm talking about today. I ain't talking about some goofball God. I ain't talking about Dagon. You have to set him up and super glue him back together. Yeah. I'm talking about God Almighty is with you. God Almighty is with you. I believe with all my heart. Now every one of us have some fear. There are things that our flesh is weak. But I believe with all my heart the reason that Paul, when he knew Nero's chop block waited for him, could say with all assurance, I am now ready to be offered. I believe that the reason that Peter, whenever they took him to crucify him, requested that he be crucified upside down. I believe the reason that Polycarp stood before the governors of that day and said, go ahead and burn me. He's never done me nothing but good and I will not turn my back on him now. I believe that all came. I believe that fear not was because they knew He was with them. Mm -hmm. He was with them. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if you get that down inside of you, I believe you will know that when you're on your deathbed. All of us fear death. When we think about it now, right. we don't like the thought of it. But when we're on our deathbed, what can cause an old man who's about to say goodbye to lift up both of his dying hands with a tear running from his eye with his loved ones gathered all around him, he can smile and say no fear. For the one that brought me safe thus far is going to lead me on from here. Amen. Fear not. Why not? Because he is with us today. The Creator. Praise Amen. God. <laughs> fear Jesus. not. Fear not. Praise God. And God wants us to know this today because he wants to assure us right. that he won't walk off from us and leave us. Yeah. He will not forsake us. He will not fail us. His promises are not going to vanish away. Right. He wants us to know today that He's not going to give up on us or abandon us. Amen. Amen. Fear not. Why not? David said, What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Right. Think about that today. David said, When I'm afraid, that's a pretty strong confession. Right. You know, we're men. We ain't supposed to admit we're afraid. Mm -hmm. When I'm afraid, I will trust in in you. Fear not. Why not? Because He's with you. He is with you. Grab a hold of that today. Get a hold of the Word of God. And not some modern down, watered down mess. Amen. Get the closest thing you can get to the original. Amen. Sink your teeth into the promises that are in that book because right. they are for you. Fear not. Why not? Because He is with us today. He wants us to know this today because He wants to encourage us. He wants to explain to us that He's with us. He'll never leave us. He wants to equip us to be able to stand in the midst of any storm or any valley because we know that He's with us. David stood before Goliath, not in his own strength, and he made that plain when he said, you've got your weapons? i got the name of the Lord. The Lord is with me. That's what he stood in Saul's tent and tried to explain to Saul. I can't take these things. But the God that delivered me out of the hand of the bear and the hand of the lion, He's with me. Amen. Fear not. He is with me. Yeah. He wants to reveal this to us today or to bring it back to our remembrance. It's not a big revelation. It's here from front to back. All right. To prepare us. 
Because we don't know what we're going to have to go through before we get out of here. Amen. Amen. I'd like to tell you today that we're not going to go through anything. Everything's going to be smooth. One day we're just going to disappear and then all the bad stuff's going to set in. But I'm afraid we're already seeing some of the bad stuff set in already. Yes, Amen. Sir. He wants us to be prepared no matter what we face. Right. If we have to give our life. Listen, there are brothers and sisters giving their life right. for the cause of Christ. Amen. He wants us to have the same assurance that Paul had when he walked up and laid his head down on Nero's chop block and said, I am now ready to be offered. Yeah. For to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. To live is for Christ, but to die is gain. Amen. Fear not. Why not? Because He is with us. He's with you today. Praise God. I pray that that brings some encouragement to you. Someone else have something today before we go?